Can Rubio rebound following that bruising night? He simply does not have the experience to be president of the United States. And Trump trying to silence Jeb. Let me talk. Quiet. Help talk out of time. Who will survive this critical primary? All out. The Democrats on the move. Hillary Clinton in Flint. Bernie Sanders live in New York. Terror scare. The double-decker bus and the explosion on a London bridge. Who didn't get the warning about this movie moment? Senior scam, the hunt tonight for two young women targeting retirement homes, claiming to be raising funds for a school trip, getting away with stacks of cash. And on thin ice, the lakeside parking lot that was actually the lake, the hazardous scene that drivers came back to when their cars broke through the ice. This is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas. Tonight, a critical moment in the race for the White House. The New Hampshire primary just two days away, and some of the candidates have to finish big or go home. Seven Republicans on the stage for last night's ABC News debate in Manchester. The fiercest action, repeated blows to Senator Marco Rubio, aiming to stop his momentum. That might have shielded Donald Trump from attacks, but it did not stop him from attacking, even when the audience booed him. We have team coverage tonight on both sides of the race. We begin with ABC's David Wright. I like Marco Rubio, and he's a smart person and a good guy, but he simply does not have the experience to be president of the United States. Last night, Marco Mentum ran smack into Chris Christie. You have not been involved in a consequential decision where you had to be held accountable. You just simply haven't. Marco Rubio didn't exactly help himself. Let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. By getting exactly stuck in his own talking points. Line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is, the memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's there it the is, reason everybody. why this Trotting out the same well-practiced line. He knows what he is doing. Four times. But you're accident. getting pounded for repeating that speech. Well, look, we raised more money last night in the first hour of that debate than any other debate. Today, Rubio did his best to ignore the headlines. After last night's debate, oh, you said the same three or four times. I'm going to say it again. But it was a red flag for some of the voters attending his event. Marco should have been a little better prepared. He's a young senator, just like Obama was. I'm not so sure he's ready. So yeah. something like this raises questions yes. about his experience. Yes, yes, it does. Chris Christie couldn't agree yeah. more. Just going for the newest or shiniest thing, we did that seven years ago. Another headline last night, Donald and Trump practically endorsed torture. And I'd bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. Even using the word medieval last medieval night time. and today on this week. They chopped off heads. So we're going to chop what off we heads? Had. We're going to do things beyond waterboarding, perhaps, if that happens to come. Last night, Trump seemed to enjoy torturing Jeb Bush. How tough is it a to lot take of away times, property from an elderly talk, woman? Let me talk. Quiet. How a tough lot is of it? times. Donald Trump shushed you last night. You looked like you wanted to deck him. <laughs> Fair to say? Shush me. Come on, man. I mean, we're running for president. Have a good time. Exactly. Today, Trump was at it again. They booed me when I attacked poor, poor, poor Jeb Bush, who brings out his mother because he needed help. No, he needed help. Mommy, please come walk in the snow, Mom. The oddest moment of the night, Dr. Ben Carson missing his entrance cue and causing a bit of a traffic jam. I kept waiting to hear my name, waiting, and couldn't hear it. Tonight, all of the candidates take a brief break, uh, but as you can see even here at Marco Rubio's Super Bowl party, a chance for a stump speech. All of the candidates focused on their big game day Tuesday. Rubio's got to be hoping he didn't fumble too bad, Tom. Or get sacked too hard. All right, David Wright from Manchester for us. David, thank you. Senator Rubio wasn't the only candidate with a lot on the line in last night's debate. ABC's John Carl joins me now from New Hampshire. And, John, what effect do you think that debate will have on the race? Well, Marco Rubio hopes it won't have much of an effect. As you saw, he ran right into a buzzsaw named Chris Christie. Now, his team knows that this was a really bad moment for him at a very critical time, but they hope that because the Super Bowl is tonight, that voters will be distracted and move on to something else. Insofar as much as it brings down Marco Rubio, it is not necessarily Chris Christie that benefits, though, Tom. It may well be John Kasich. The Ohio governor had his best debate last night, and while those two fought it out, he was above the fray with a positive message that you could see resonating today in New Hampshire. Now, John, does Trump get any type of boost going into the primary? 
Well, it seems to me that Trump solidified his status as the clear front runner. Nobody really touched him. You saw Jeb Bush tried, uh, but he seemed as confident as ever today, Tom, and maybe if this is possible, even more confident. All right, we'll have to wait and see. John, thank you so much. With two days to the primary, the Democrats weren't taking this Sunday as a day of rest either. Hillary Clinton traveling to Flint, Michigan to stand with the people suffering from that water crisis. And Bernie Sanders, all smiles back in New Hampshire, fresh off his comedy turn in New York. ABC's Cecilia Vega following the Democrats from the start. Bernie Sanders today feeling confident. Oh, that's good. The Vermont senator packing in the crowds and packing in the punches. The most important foreign policy issue in the modern history of this country was the war in Iraq. I was right on that issue. Hillary Clinton was wrong. Two days until New Hampshire voters make their decision, and it is now a fight to the finish. But the real question for Bernie Sanders right now is not whether he can win here in New Hampshire, it's whether he can carry all of this momentum beyond his backyard. Hillary Clinton trailing by double digits in most polls here. Instead, spending her day in Flint, Michigan, talking about that water crisis. What happened in Flint is immoral. Leaving her most famous surrogate First back in New Hampshire Senate to make the case for her. The Republicans have tried way harder, way longer to beat her than they did me. Because they're way scarier of her than they were of me. But overnight, a different kind of face-off. I am so sick of the 1% getting this preferential treatment. Sanders coming face to face with his SNL doppelganger, Larry David. Sounds like socialism to me. <laughs> Democratic socialism. Uh, what's the difference? Huge difference. <laughs> A lot of laughs last night. Now, Clinton advisors are downplaying expectations here. They do not expect her to win this state. If Hillary Clinton is hoping to tap into the undecided vote at the last minute, here's the reality. The latest polls show that 21% of Democratic voters in New Hampshire have yet to make up their mind in this race, Tom. The expectations game well underway. Okay, Cecilia, thank you. And stay with ABC News for the New Hampshire primary. I'm back there tomorrow following the Republicans, GMA and World News live in New Hampshire on Tuesday and full coverage of the results Tuesday night. All right, we turn overseas now to that scary scene in London, the quiet of a clear Sunday morning shattered by this explosion on one of the city's most famous bridges, so chilling because of terror attacks on buses before. But when the dust settled, the word got around that moment was made in Hollywood. ABC's Jennifer Eccleston reporting in from London. An iconic double-decker bus crossing a bridge, suddenly bursting into flames. Debris flying into the air. Oh my God! The scene so realistic, so terrifying, many didn't know what was happening. It was quite a drama. Author Sophie Kinsella was at a nearby playground with her kids this morning. I really thought what I was looking at was possibly, you know, a major event. But the explosion on London's Lambeth Bridge, just a stunt for action star Jackie Chan's new film, The Foreigner. Nigel Huddleston catching it on camera, <laughs> clearly aware it was staged. The production team sent out this flyer alerting the public, saying, quote, the explosion is controlled. But not everyone was informed, bringing back memories of the other time a London bus was targeted, the deadly terror attacks in the summer of 2005, some finding the similarity insensitive. City officials reassured the public the explosion was just a stunt, but in these times of heightened terror fears, even fiction can hit too close to home. Tom? Jennifer Elkelston in London for us tonight. Jennifer, thank you. Turning now to earthquake ravaged Taiwan, new drone images tonight of the extensive damage caused by the 6.4 magnitude quake. Crews searching through the massive piles of concrete for survivors. They believe 100 people are still buried in the debris of this collapsed apartment building. Families devastated, at least 32 people killed by that earthquake. And tonight, North Korea sparking new fears with a missile launch. State media said the rocket took an Earth observation satellite into orbit but North Korea has vowed to build a nuclear-armed missile that could hit the U.S. mainland. The White House condemned the launch, saying it is ready to respond to the North's provocations. 
Now back here to a Philadelphia suburb and a rescue from an icy pond. Three boys playing hockey on a thin layer of ice crashed through it into the frigid water. One boy was able to get out on his own, but rescue teams in the cold water gear use an inflatable boat to rescue the others. They're expected to be fine. And thin ice was also a hazard for Wisconsin drivers who parked near a lake while they visited a winter festival. It turns out it wasn't a parking lot, but the lake itself. And when they returned, they found some of their cars were beyond rescue. Here's ABC's Gloria Riviera. It was an alarming scene. Over a dozen vehicles sinking into the frigid waters of Wisconsin's Lake Geneva. Those drivers, sure, they had left them in a good spot. We saw that people were parked on the ice, so we said, heck yeah, let's park on the ice. They did, heading off to a local winter festival. Connor Long snapped this photo, showing car after car in the background, tightly packed together. Within hours, this. We have vehicles through the lake with no subjects in it. We need manpower. Emergency crews crawling out on thin ice to save cars. At least 10 are a total loss. They were all parked within arm's reach of one another. That's a lot of weight for 10 inches of ice. Safety experts say ice must be 8 to 12 inches thick to hold a car or small pickup. 12 to 15 inches thick for a mid-sized truck. But who is measuring? The minute you decide to drive a vehicle on the lake, you're basically rolling the dice. No ice is 100% safe. I think it's stupid to park on ice now. Won't do that again, but live and learn, right? Luckily, no one was hurt. Gloria Riviera, ABC News, Washington. Now to the weather now. Two storms brewing and heading to New England. Blizzard conditions in the Upper Plains. Snow drifts building up here in Wyoming. And wet snow falling in North Carolina. Part of a storm moving up the Atlantic coast. Meteorologist Indra Peterson joins us. And Indra, you're tracking both of these storms tonight? Yeah, absolutely. We're watching a strong coastal storm right now already in through the Carolinas. Now, as we track it up the coastline by tomorrow morning, we're already talking about a nor'easter from Boston down through New York City. But watch what happens throughout the day. New Hampshire starting to get in on the action. The good news for the primaries itself, it looks like we could start to see a break. But notice another storm right below it. New York City, Philadelphia already watching another storm three to six inches possible in through New Hampshire, but locally up to 18 inches out towards the Cape. We're going to be watching for blizzard conditions there. I'd be doing you a complete disservice if I did not tell you about an Arctic blast, a big change, sub-zero wind chills expected in the plains in the Midwest. It doesn't stop there. In fact, that cold air is going to be spreading even to the south and the northeast. I don't think it's a change anyone wants. Yeah, negative 19 in Duluth. That is cold. I'm going to say no. <laughs> All right, Andrew, thanks so much. We want to turn out to an Ivy League school rocked by one of the most explosive issues on campuses across the country. Tonight, the president of a fraternity, you see him there at Cornell University, has been charged with attempted rape. He says he's innocent, but his fraternity is suspended and he's due back in court on Tuesday. ABC's Philip Mena is in Ithaca. Tonight, the president of an elite Ivy League fraternity is in jail, accused of sexually assaulting a female student on campus. 21-year-old Wolfgang Ballinger, president of Psi Upsilon at Cornell University, surrendering to police four days after the alleged attack. The college junior is seen here in this YouTube video talking about his goals. At a young age, I was taught to appreciate the value of hard work and especially self-made work. Ballinger, whose father owns a famous New York music club, is charged with three felony counts. The speed with which they took this case from the university's purview and brought it into a criminal setting suggests that the prosecution believes they have a strong case. According to court documents, the alleged victim claims Ballinger tried forcing himself onto her in his fraternity house bedroom several times, despite her saying, I don't want to. In a statement to ABC News, Ballinger's attorney denies the accusations, saying Wolfgang Ballinger is not guilty of the charges that have been filed against him. Cornell University President Elizabeth Garrett releasing this statement after suspending the fraternity. Sexual violence has no place at Cornell. We will be considering what additional steps should be taken to ensure the Greek community at Cornell is living up to our institutional standard of excellence and respect for others. A sentiment shared by students here on campus. It's not representative of us as, as a community and us as a school. Wolfgang Ballinger remains in county jail tonight, awaiting his next court date on Tuesday. Tom? Philip Mena for us tonight. Philip, thank you. And in New York City, that massive crane that came crashing down has been removed. It was cut into 35 pieces and hauled away there on a flatbed truck. The crane suddenly came crashing down on Friday morning during a snowstorm, killing one person. It's still not clear exactly what caused the collapse. Still ahead tonight, praying on the elderly.